the main difference between surgery and interventional cardiology is we do things minimally invasively. So where surgery conventionally where you open the patient up, for example, heart surgery where you open the chest and actually do bypass surgery, which is a big procedure, interventional cardiology does things minimally invasively. So we don't open the chest. We go through with small puncture sites into the arteries like the wrist artery or the artery in the leg, and we go up through the arteries to facilitate things like opening up, opening up a blocked artery. The other thing that we do as interventional cardiologists is we cover for emergencies. So Good Samaritan Hospital is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all holidays to care for heart attack patients. So for any, any moment in time, a patient can come into the emergency room with a heart attack. Uh, where I would get called to evaluate that patient and do an emergency procedure to try and abort a heart attack, which is blocked artery, poor blood flow to the heart muscle, the heart muscle is dying, and you try and get that artery open so that you can restore blood flow and abort their heart attack. Well, I think we, when you're a physician and you see uh, people who lose their health, who have chronic health problems, who have emergencies, I think it really it really makes you appreciate health. And so focusing on being healthy is a big part of, of my life and making sure that I do everything I can to maintain my health. And that's because I have family and I have three kids and they're all young and energetic and I want to be there skiing with them. Family history is important. Um, that's one of the risk factors for heart disease. Um, but I always tell my patient because more and more now as I get older, the patients I care for in the cath lab are younger than me. Um, having come in with heart attacks or having chest discomfort with exertion and needing a stent. And that's because statistically the most likely thing to take all of us, men and women, is heart disease. And so for all of us walking around today, you have a certain risk, a percent, that you could have heart disease. And depending on your risk factors, it may be higher or lower, but it's never zero percent. And so that's where education comes in with the young people, older people alike, of the signs and symptoms of heart disease.